Welcome, and thanks for joining with AIP, the American Institute of Pyramid Research. We study pyramids around the world, especially in Egypt, with the belief they hold special wisdom. Please subscribe to our channel as we uncover long hidden secrets, explain sacred symbols, and demystify the world's greatest mysteries. Okay, so 27, 27, 25, 22, 19, 15, 12, 9, 6. Course complete! Course complete! Course complete! Course complete! This was a great feeling of elation for me because I had been pursuing the stars of the constellation Orion on the soil of Egypt. And here we had come to where the GPS led us to the head the head of Orion, Misa. Yeah, I'm saying that this point, this is where I put the flag in if I was the explorer, you know, I put the flag in here. And so what's well, interesting, a couple things are interesting to me, but okay, so this would be the head of Misa. So if you're bringing the constellation Orion down to the soil of Egypt, which is our project, the head of, of Orion, which is a multiple star, we said one of its manifestations over there, but with our newest, this is it. Now, if you look at this on Google Earth, because if you're reading about this, I'll probably have you know coordinates in there for you. You'll see that there's like a square around this point. Like this point is like the center of a square. Now in the work we've been doing with uh, Fibonacci spirals and with other things, we've come to some important points that are critical, like a, a sacred circle we found in the Giza Plateau. We found the center of it. And sometimes, you know, the most important part, there's nothing there. It's, since this is the center, it's really what this is that's important, and the center point might not be a critical part of the construction, because I say a lot to say, we had a debate when we all looked at it. Some, some thought that it's the square that you'll see from Google Earth around, which is the center. The square looks like it could have been an ancient uh, Egyptian site, because if you get to looking at these sites, you know, they're, they're usually, there's, you know, a valley temple there, but often there's a square that marks off the whole temple, the whole complex. And it looks like, it just looks like, and of course you'd have to do, and I'm, I don't have the money at the time, but you know, or, you know, or I'd never get the permissions, but you'd look and see what appear to be the borders if, if you're digging down looking if there is some kind of structure. That these canyons, because there's canyons, that the square that's formed that you can see from Google Earth, it's like canyons, okay? So why do a canyon form a square? You know, I can see a canyon, the Grand Canyon's not a square. You know, it's a long thing. So why is there a canyon there, over here, over there, making this a big square? So it seems like there, it could be that if you did the archeology, span you know, and got the money, spent all the years it would take digging this out, you might find a complex here. You know, my friend, Mr. Hunter, insists that all these, all these uh, Orion points on, on Earth were pyramids. So he would say there, there is here. He would say that, I don't know if there is, but it just seems to me, and it's several others, we looked at this, some didn't, some thought it was natural. So some thought just by looking at Google Earth, forget about looking at what we're actually, now that we're actually here, when you look at it on Google Earth, you know, we had both opinions. Some could see, you know, how it could be natural, but I'm more on the side that there was something here because usually nature doesn't form a square, you know. Uh, and the other thing I think that's significant from the Alpha and the Omega sense, which is what no forensic, forensic scientists wouldn't do, but what I'm finding is the Alpha and Omega is involved in this, is that, you know, a lot of these mounds in here come to a point, I'm calling this Pyramid Valley, like right here. This one, that, that's just the point. We, we didn't see that anywhere coming in. Everything we saw was rounded sand drifts, rounded sand drifts, whether they were big or small, they're rounded. But in this valley, there's a lot of these peaks that are pyramid shaped. Now there's probably an explanation for that, and maybe it happened in the last 10 years, the last 20, it's not ancient. I'm saying what it is, it's assigned to me as the present researcher, saying, you know, this is Pyramid Valley. This is this is Mysa, you're, you're on course, you know? And so, uh, and another thing I would draw from this is there's more and more evidence of man here. You know, the other Mysa point uh, is right over there, and it's a man-made construction. It's like a half pyramid. So in the middle of the desert, and there's no bus stops, there's no roads, there's nothing. There's a half pyramid and a presentation station. Okay? So man is obviously moving in here, but there's no 7-Elevens, there's no roads, there's no nothing. And over here, there's no road. But there's a ton of evidence of they've done a bunch of stuff with bulldozers and dumping stuff, and here, even even all the way in here, we saw a ton of evidence of machines, modern machines, 
to here. So even though this this looks like you know just a desert that's been here for thousands and millions of years, or whatever. I'm saying that one of the things I'm getting from mice, it's the it's the modern blend of man and nature. It's the modern blend of man and nature, and we've seen that in some of the other points. In other words, I didn't make this up. I didn't decide to write a novel, and I'll make it be this. I'm in my search, in my journey, following the Alpha Omega. Now at the Mice point, I'm saying that's so. What's here now? There's not a pyramid. There looks like there could be an evidence of a former, you know, Egyptian temple structure. Uh, it grounds a whole area like we were in Hawara yesterday, and Hawara, the Hawara labyrinth is plainly a big square, a big square, a big square near a pyramid. I think there's evidence that this could be that because of its shape. But what I'm saying is the nature and evidence of modern man and technology are here. And so the head of Orion was just thinking symbolic. And because remember, I'm not limited to a forensic scientist. I love Mark Lehner. You know, he's a forensic scientist to the max. You know, he's the centerfold for, for doing empirical science. I love Mark Lehner, the work he does. And I, 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 I benefit from it. But I can go farther than him because I'm not an archaeologist and I'm not an Egyptologist. I'm an adventurer. I'm a, I'm a freelance scholar, an independent scholar. And, uh, and I'm saying that, that so the, in the, the things I work with, which is not the archaeological equipment that Egyptologists work with, the signs, directions, Google Earth, you know, I'm saying that a theme that I am plainly getting in trying to find Orion on Egyptian soil, one that I never had in my mind before I started this research, a theme is the connection of man and nature. You know, the, I'm, so I'm not going to what did the fourth dynasty believe? What were their views about God? I'm not extrapolating because that they're dead, they're gone. They're, let archaeologists deal with that. I'm saying I, I find it interesting that this pyramid is here. I love the Great Pyramid. Giza is beautiful, but. I'm, I'm saying that what my research has led me, that the message coming to me, which I did not have going into this, is that message of man and the environment. You know, the environmental crisis that we are or are not facing today, depending on who you listen to. That that, which is becoming in many ways the, the leading issue for young people today, I'm saying they're on the cutting edge of something. This ancient constellation named long ago, I think by Enoch, that all ancient civilizations, China, you know, you could just name them, Mexico, you know, uh, South America, that everybody's connecting to Orion, an ancient symbol whose stars were named long ago because there's a unanimity of naming among all these different cultures. So this ancient fascination with Orion is coming to head today for me. My son is named Orion. So I, you know, I'm connected to this. It's coming to me to say the relationship of man and nature. That's one of the themes. And, and there, I think that this configuration leads to certain conclusions about that. If you continue to follow this study, you'll see that I think not only is it saying this is the theme, it's saying there's a right way to deal with this. And I think that's a message coming from something other than me. It's not a message I chose to champion and I'm using my Orion theory to use it. No, I studied Orion and I'm led to say that. So here we are at the head star of Misa. The GPS point, as far as I know, the first people to ever ascertain this. And uh, that's what I have to say. So, thanks for joining us. Stay with us. Stay with us.